Skip, what do you have to say to Stephen A.? <laughs> it was looking like Good a day, man. Good day, I want to welcome you back from vacation, and I appreciate you having the guts to come in here and face me today. You have nothing to say? Look, man, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I, listen, listen, on this particular day, on this particular day, I, I mean, there's a lot of things that I could point to. If I were you, I would do it, but I'm not you. I'm Stephen A., and I have to sit here and give the kid credit where credit is due. 316-yard passing, and I'm, I'm not even looking at his statistics, having over five catches for more than 30-plus yards, a couple of 50-yarders, a 40-yarder. I, I mean, the guy, I'm looking at the guy looking off safeties, looking, look, you know, just being a pocket passer, doing what needs to be done and resembling a quarterback in this league. There are plenty of days. Uh, that you could point the finger at Tim Tebow and, and, and look at his level of ineptitude and just and just excoriate it to you know add it, you know to, to the umph degree. But this ain't the day. He deserves all the credit in the world. And I got to even or fresh off vacation, I got to tip my cap to tip my cap to that kid. I had no expectations whatsoever that he would be able to do what he did. And my hats off to him. I got to give him credit. I appreciate you. I, 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 I'm in no position to say a single solitary. A critical word about him today, not today. I appreciate you picking yourself up off the floor and taking the floor first. Yeah. But I do want to remind you of the old saying about he who laughs last, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and in this case, yeah. all he does is win a playoff game. And in this it's case, once game. again, I told you from the start, he will be your worst nightmare. He will continue to be your worst nightmare. And I'm going to restate well, what I told you when we argued about this back in training camp, when reportedly Tim Tebow was demoted to fourth string by John Fox and John Elway. He will become their worst nightmare, and I believe that he has. He has now taken a 1-4 team on an 8-4 and four run. He now has 14 touchdown passes to only six interceptions. And in uh, the biggest game of his life yesterday, when he was virtually playing for his life, he throws for 316, including the 80-yard pass to win it on the first play of overtime. And I keep telling you, you've made fun of me. Unleash him! And they finally unleashed him, but it took until the first play of overtime. They had run the ball on first down 23 of 24 times on first down in regulation. And finally when Pittsburgh just flat out was daring them to let him throw the ball on first down, they play action passed, and you saw the outcome. Well, and I have told we'll you see. repeatedly, I'm going to finish, I've told you he's not John Elway, I've never said he's going to be a pro bowler or a great passer, but he can be a very effective passer, especially when it counts. We are talking huge clutch gene here, huge fourth quarter overtime clutch gene, again and again and again all year, and I think he will sustain this if they will let him. The floor is yours. I will deal with you on the specifics of everything that you said Wednesday when I'm in for a full show. But I will <laughs> tell you to me that the overtime, the overtime situation is not what stood out to me. It's how he was moving the ball in the second quarter. I couldn't believe it. I'm looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They could not stop him. I'm talking about the second quarter when they put up 20 points. He was moving the ball at will. One play after another, after another, he was making plays, and it seemed to demoralize the Steelers' defense in a way that I yep. had not seen, and I was absolutely shell-shocked and stunned. So that stood out to me more than what transpired in overtime. Obviously, you've got the safety, Monday Paul, you know, put, coming up to the line of scrimmage. They were down deep in the box. Made no sense to me whatsoever why they would do that in that particular situation. Uh, just leaving Demarius Moore, who had a field day with Ike Taylor, who Demarius put Thomas, forth yeah. one of the absolute worst. Yeah, Demarius Thomas, who put forth with Ike Taylor, who put forth one of the, the worst performances I have ever seen by an NFL quarterback in NFL history. I mean, it was that bad, and I'm glad that everybody went in and hugged him and all of this stuff. And did it. Tom, ben, Big Ben Roethlisberger, telling him how much he loved him and all of this other stuff. That's for another day. But I will tell you this: this is where. It's, it, my misery kicks in. I will, I will educate you about this, Skip Bayless, to another level. I worked in Philadelphia for 16 years. You keep talking about the Eagles inside and all that stuff because of Philadelphia. Then you call me the Giants guy, the New York guy, because I'm a native New Yorker. And all of those things were true. But I have been a diehard Steelers fan my, pretty much my entire life. The very I did first not know football that. game. 
that the very first football game that I ever saw was when I was five years old, December 23rd, 1972, when Franco Harris caught the immaculate reception. And ever since then, I've been in love with black and gold. So I've been a diehard Steelers fan all my life. And to watch them is bad enough that Tebow did what he did. But to do it against my Steelers, <laughs> I can't even express to you how, how depressed I have been. I did not answer the phone. Our producer, Galen Gordon, had to call me several times. My mama called me. My sisters called me. I mean, everybody wanted to talk to me. I did not answer the phone. I did not pick up the phone until this morning about 12, almost 12 hours after the defeat. It took me that long just to gumption up whatever I needed to to show up this morning because I did not want to see you, I did not want to talk to you, and I still don't, but I'm here. Are you trying to suggest that there was something immaculate about this reception that won the game yesterday? You know, it's worse than that. No, it isn't. Even though his favorite verse is, is John chapter 3, verse 16, and he ended up passing for 316 yards and mere all of this other stuff. You see the correlation. The mere coincidence. <laughs> it's really not that. Again, I'm not going to disrespect Tim Tebow. This was about a guy who, for one afternoon in a playoff game, looked every bit like an NFL quarterback. This is not about divine intervention. This is not about God putting his beautiful hand on Tim Tebow. This is about a kid that believed in himself when very few people believed in him, and I was one of them. And to be quite honest with you, I still am, but we'll elaborate on that Wednesday. <laughs> on this particular afternoon, You're still not he, resembled an, an, he resembled an NFL quarterback. I'm not going to take anything away. It was a spectacular performance by this kid. My hat's off to him. So you were, uh, Jay just asked you, you're still not sold? No. <laughs> and I'm not going to jump on a Skip Tebow bandwagon either. I I'm not going to jump on a Skip Tebow bandwagon either. Like I told you, when I get in there Wednesday, I will deal with you. But today, I, it, it just, it, it would be so flagrantly disrespectful and dare I say sacrilegious to get on these airwaves and disrespect or malign or critique Tim Tebow in any way. He was that sensational yesterday. Now, there's a multitude of reasons why he looked the way that he looked, but it doesn't take away from the fact that he got the job done. I got to eat crow. I got to suck it up. I can't say a word. I can't. I'm not even in a position with you today, in all honesty, to disagree with anything that you have to say about this kid. You've been right on the money in terms of what you have been saying, and, and, and you don't understand, nothing irritates me and grates me more than having to agree with you about this. Hey, let not, me, let me I can't even recall you. something in my career that makes me feel worse than this. Okay, good. I'm glad. Go that ahead. makes me feel better. Let me yes, ask I'm sure, you I'm sure one you other are thing that happened yesterday that was no coincidence. I have, according to you, disrespected Eric Decker repeatedly on this show saying he's yes. way overestimated as their number one receiver, his primary receiver. It was no coincidence mm -hmm. to me, and I do not ever wish injury on anybody. And God bless Eric Decker to recover from whatever knee injury he suffered yesterday. But Stephen A., that's true. They have been under, they've had no rapport, no connection the whole year. I don't know why. I don't know if it's an off the field thing or if it's just an on the field, they just don't connect. But literally, the next play, after Eric Decker went down when he caught the 21-yard pass and they overruled it on replay, the very next play, yeah. it wound up third and 12 from the 18 with Pittsburgh up six to nothing. And it looked like the sky was once again going to fall in on the Denver Broncos at mile high. What happened? Tebow rolled left, 51 yards to Demarius. And it broke the game back open, the whole game. And you talked about the second quarter. Wait a minute. From that play. Wait a minute. Wait a minute for a second. You didn't just, you know, insult and malign Eric Decker. I did. I, I you just sat told you the there truth. And said, oh, no, 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 I'm saying. The you, painful truth. No, 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 you said it. No, wait a minute. You said it about him, but I'm saying you didn't limit it to him. You talked about the whole core receivers for the Denver Broncos. But he was you the number one talked guy. About he was them. my number one I know that, one but, you, but you, didn't leave, you didn't limit it to him. You made sure to be critical of the rest of them, too, and you how want? John Elway had to get a bunch of better receivers. As a matter of fact, you picked the Steelers to win this particular I, I game. But I'm not going to go even, I, even I underestimated Tim Tebow. There was no way they were going to unleash him oh, against the number one ranked pass defense. And let me tell you about Demarius Thomas. 
He was Josh McDaniels' choice over Des Bryant, a very controversial choice in Denver. And Demarius hurt himself badly in the offseason, had a bad injury, had to come back from it. His first game back was Tebow's first game to start, the, the, the sixth game of the year after the one and four start. And he didn't run very well. He gained some weight. He looked more like a tight end. He said after the game yesterday, I finally felt like myself. That was the emergence of Demarius Thomas that you saw yesterday. So maybe this bodes well going forward because they definitely have a way back as we started seeing in Minnesota. Can, can I ask you a question, Skip Bayless? Can I ask you a question? Do you lose at all? I mean, you picked the Steelers to win. Now you're giving us explanations as to why you picked them to win, okay? So you hedge your bets any which way it goes. So in other words, Eric Decker goes down. So that opened the gateways for Demarius Thomas to connect with Tim Tebow and that cohesion and the chemistry that you've been waiting for. Oh, now that that's the reason because Eric Decker got hurt, even though you picked the Steelers to win a particular game. Even when he had lost three straight, you had excuses for that. Time and time and time again, you keep hedging your bets. At some point in time, here's what we're going to do Wednesday, okay? And I'm going to brace you for this. I'm going to give you 48 hours to prepare, right? <laughs> what you would need to prepare for is that you're not going to be allowed to hedge your bets any longer. You're not going to be allowed to sit there and say one thing and then, oh, when it comes back, even when you're wrong, you're right. No, 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 no. Nobody else gets that leeway. Nobody else gets that latitude. You're not going to be allowed to do that any longer. You got me. I manned up. This is what it is. I said what I said about Tebow. I stand by it. But the bottom line is on this particular day, I was wrong. Period. When it comes to you, you are not going to be allowed to hedge your bed. I know this is the Skip Tebow show. Trust me. I understand that. Hey, but but Wednesday, you, that's going to change for that day. We're going to change that for that day. You told me it's all about the defense, and I kept telling you, the defense has been pretty horrible for four games. Not getting turnovers, they finally got one yesterday. They can't stop the run, they gave up 150 yards again yesterday. Buffalo runs I told off you. Over Buffalo. I told you, you it was that? about the defense. I, I'm getting ready to, if you let me speak. I told you it was about the defense because the man had went 45 to 50 minutes for a multitude of games playing sorry. He didn't do that yesterday. I, and it was a big game because it's the playoffs. And let's be clear, here's another point of credit that Tim Tebow actually deserves. Not only was it a playoff game, but clearly his future in Denver was on the line. If he had stunk up the joint the way he stunk up the joint in the previous three weeks, he might not be the starting quarterback in Denver. He might not even be in Denver Steve next year. Thank you for making my point on that. Played the way, but because, but he, but because he played the way that he played under such duress, under such pressure, he deserved a abundance of credit for that and I'm giving it to him but I'm not hedging my bets like somebody I know okay but you've been saying all along this is all my fault so do I get credit for what happened yeah. did I throw that touchdown yeah. pass in overtime yeah did I do that yeah, you know did what I throw for 316 no, no, no. John yeah but, <laughs> but you didn't do you didn't do it directly but indirectly the it's shrapnel of criticism the shrapnel of criticism that you created now for Tim Tebow ultimately elevated other, well listen listen it ain't my fault that you don't you don't know your vocabulary as well as i do just stick with me I baby i'm here to help you me. all i'm, I'm trying to say to you all, all i'm trying to say yeah i get you but then all i'm trying to say to you is that he deserves a lot of credit he responded to the pressure you contributed to creating that pressure because you elevated him beyond astronomical proportion and ultimately indirectly that means you gave an assist i just defended him i just said from the start he can win games in the National Football League. And I'm standing by it because he can and he will. You know and he will be your we will talk, going forward. We will talk. 